please, sir, please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. My name is Chris, C-H-R-I-S, Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. How are you employed, sir? I'm employed as the Chief of the Office of Crime Scene Response for the Division of Forensic Sciences, Wisconsin State Crime Laboratories. What is your educational background and training briefly? I have a Bachelor's of Science degree in Molecular Biology from Marquette University. Um, I started my career approximately 16 years ago in the DNA Analysis Unit as a Forensic Scientist. Um, as a Forensic Scientist, I went through an extensive training program to be uh, friends, uh, a DNA analyst, um, and I've carried many positions since then. And uh, as chief of the crime response unit, what are your duties and responsibilities? My duties are twofold. I have an administrative aspect and a technical aspect. The administrative aspect is to oversee and monitor all operations or all aspects of the crime scene response program operations. My technical aspects come into play when I receive calls from law enforcement to respond to scenes to provide technical assistance. My primary duty as the technical aspect is to preserve the integrity of the evidence at crime scenes. This is done through proper examination, recognition, documentation, and collection of physical items of evidence. Furthermore, Another technical aspect I have is to write confidential reports of findings, and this basically summarizes any examinations and processing techniques that are used on scene and is a summary of the findings from those techniques. Lastly, I testify in court when needed. Is there a set procedure you follow when you are asked to respond to a crime scene? Yes. What is that, please? Judge leading. <laughs> if law enforcement is at the scene and would like the crime lab crime scene response team to respond, they simply call the lab that's in their jurisdiction and basically the call will get routed to me and I'll dispatch a team to the scene. And on November 21 of 2021, was the crime scene response unit asked to respond to an incident in the city of Waukesha, county of Waukesha, state of Wisconsin? Yes. What was the nature of the call? The nature of the call was to respond to an address on Maple Street to begin processing a vehicle that was abandoned in the driveway of that residence. Were you given any limited information as to the significance of the vehicle? Yes, it was reported to me that the vehicle was most more than likely involved in uh, running through the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Were you uh, aware that it was reported pedestrians had been struck during the uh, event? Yes, that was reported. Um, the objection is noted. I'll, I'll allow it as it is uh, foundational. The witness may answer. Yes. Now, when I think of a crime scene, I typically think of a place or a location. Does your unit also uh, cover processing of a vehicle like this? Yes, in this... Overruled, you may answer. <laughs> in this particular circumstance or situation, the vehicle itself can be considered a crime scene in and of itself. And in your um, years with the crime lab, do you have prior experience processing motor vehicles that were suspected? Well, this guy is very knowledgeable, that's for sure. I think I'm going to enjoy watching his uh, testimony because this is interesting to me. Uh, obviously, you know, the loser, the convicted, the deadbeat, the bitch boy, he doesn't like it because, you know, that's his... His vehicle, his mommy's vehicle, and just wait till you see what this guy found in there. It's freaking hilarious. He he really lived in there. I mean, like really lived in there. You'll see. Expected to have been involved in fatal collisions with pedestrians. Objection, leading. Overruled. Foundational. The witness may answer. 
Yes, I've processed several vehicles related to that. Okay. <coughs> Did you personally respond to uh, the address at 338 Maple? Yes, I was one of two people responding. Who else responded? Julie Avila. And does Julie work with you? She does. What's her task or uh, primary responsibility? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. For this particular scene, I was what is called the team leader. So I'm in charge of all aspects of processing the scene. Julie was a crime scene response photographer. So she was uh, tasked with appropriate documentation via photographs. Okay. Do you recall about what time it was when you arrived on scene? I arrived on scene approximately at 8.15 p.m. on 11-21-21. And I'd like to show you a series of photographs. And I'm going to have multiple sets of photographs to go through with you. This is the first set. And the set contains uh, four or five pictures. So they're going to show up on your screen first, sir. And I'm going to uh, ask you to identify these photographs and then we'll work backwards and uh, present them to the jury with the court's permission, okay? Okay. So first on the screen is Exhibit 67, which I believe was previously admitted? Yes. 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 All right. Objection. Overruled. Sir, do you recognize the objects uh, depicted in State's Exhibit 67? Yes, this is a overview showing the front end damage of the red Ford Escape that's parked in the driveway of 338 Maple okay. Avenue. Next, we're going to present to you Exhibit 93. What's depicted in 93, please? This is a close-up showing the damage of the front end of the vehicle, the Ford, red Ford Escape that's parked in that driveway. All right. I should have asked you this. Prior to the uh, photographing of the vehicle, is it been moved or altered by you in any way, sir? No. Objection leading. Overruled. Foundational. The witness may answer. No. Please uh, put up for the witness number 68, which has been previously admitted. Go ahead. Objection. Overruled. Please describe, sir. This is, uh, the photograph's taken at an angle, the front passenger side of the vehicle, but again, showing the damage of the front end of the vehicle. Number 102. You recognize that photo, sir? I do. Please describe. This is. Objection. Overruled. This is a mid-range photograph of the driver front quarter panel showing a side view of the damage of the hood and the quarter panel. And number 103. Please describe. This is a overall photograph of the back end of the red full escape. Do you believe these five photographs are true and accurate depictions of the way the vehicle looked on the driveway at 338 Maple that evening. Okay, you guys, like I said, just wait till you see these damn pictures of what he had in there in the front seat and the back. He was literally, like, for real, for real, living in there, like, not going into the house, like, at all. I mean, he, he was, I don't know how he did it, but he must have been watching TV in there. He Just wait, you guys have got to see this evidence. It... The situation is not funny at all, and I think you guys know me enough to know I don't think it's funny. But what they found in his vehicle, to me, that's funny as shit. And bitch boy Brooks, quit objecting. You just don't want the truth to be out there. That's all there is to it. You freaking loser. Objection leading. I'm sorry, I was trying to get a hold of my witness list. Could you re-ask the question? Yes, Your Honor. Do these five photographs truly and accurately depict the way the vehicle looked at 338 Maple Street on the evening of November 21, 21? Objection, leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Yes. Move to admit 67, well, 67 and 68 already in. So move to admit 93, 102, 103, 
and permission to publish all five. Objection. Relevancy. Noted, overruled. The exhibits are received, permission to publish granted, specifically um, 67, 93, 68, 102, 103. I realize some may have been received previously, but to be thorough, I wanted to put that on the record. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Johnson, um, 67 you testified was an overview photograph? Yeah, it's an overall photograph of the... Um, overruled, they're now being shown to the jury. It's proper, it's foundational as well. Go ahead. Yes, this is a overall photograph showing the location uh, of the vehicle, but specifically also showing the front end damage of the vehicle. All right. Next, 93. Please describe. Uh, a close-up. Oh, no. A close-up of the damage that has been sustained on the front uh, hood area, bumper area of the Red Forest Escape. Next is 68. Objection. Overruled. Mid-range photograph showing the damage, front end damage, specifically from a reference point of the front passenger corner of the vehicle. I observe on the bottom of that photograph there appears to be some liquid substance on the ground. Do you see that, sir? Yes, I do. Leading. Um, overruled foundational, the witness may answer. Do you remember seeing that substance that night? Yes. Were you able to tell what it was? Objection, speculate to you. Overruled, based upon his training and experience, he may answer. Not specifically what type of fluid it is, but some kind of engine compartment fluid. From this vehicle? Yes. Okay. Number 102, please. A mid range of the driver front quarter panel. Um, also showing what I describe as a white headband, headband on the broken driver door mirror. Is that illuminated in some fashion? Just yes. leading. Overrule, the witness may answer. Just a reminder to wait until I fully rule on the objection before you answer. I apologize. Yes. How was it illuminated? Objection leading. Overrule. It has white LEDs that are within the cloth and they're blinking on and off. Okay. Hey, Bitch Boy Brooks, you don't like them explaining your mom's SUV, right? You know, it's really sad that illuminated, like, headband thing is on there, considering, I don't remember, it, I believe, no, wait a minute, that was from one of the extreme dance, I think, one of the girls. I'm not sure about that, so if someone could correct me in the comments down below, I'd appreciate it. Uh, but I know the thing that had been under the hood halfway, by the wind and on on the windshield that that was uh jenny Sorensen's. that's just sad why can't you just admit what the hell you did and the other thing is i read something that said that your mom was helping with your appeal i'm not saying that it's fact y'all do your own research but someone had said that and I'm looking it up. I'm trying to find if uh, I could see that anywhere else. But regardless, I know she helps you. And, I mean, if my child was in jail, of course, I would put, like, money on their books and all that. But I'll tell you freaking what. If my child did some dumb ass shit like what you did, and you did it intentionally... I would have to use tough love. Of course, I'd still love my child, but I would feel the, the guilt of what my child did. And your mother, like uh, uh, Jenny Sorensen's son, one of her sons had stated, 
she's done many interviews. It's like you guys love the damn camera, don't you? And honestly, I think that you decided to be your own lawyer because of that man from Florida that unalived his baby's mom and his nine-year-old daughter and tried to do the same to his son. That's, he was his own lawyer. And he was walking around the courtroom being an ass. It's just, uh, <laughs> I just have a lot of stuff I'd love to say, but I can't. I think my supporters know me enough to know what I really want to say. And then last would be 103. Jay Shea. Please describe. Oh, I'm sorry, he objected. Um, overall, go ahead. An overall from the um, further into the driveway showing the back end, the rear end of the Red Fort Escape. All right. Now, after these uh, photographs were collected on Maple Street, did there come a time where you planned to move the vehicle? Yes. Um, part of the process in arriving at a scene, there are three steps. There's a scene approach, scene assessment, and a scene processing strategy. So the scene approach starts with the moment I receive a call and start thinking about what evidence might be present, just knowing the limited facts or the limited information that I have during the call. When I arrive on scene, I do a scene assessment. So I did a walkthrough of this particular vehicle around it and including the property. Determined from that what my processing strategy would be. So going back to answer the question, my thought and my processing strategy this particular night was to collect anything that would be fragile in nature off of the vehicle and then get it transported to a more environmentally friendly uh, secured facility to continue processing in the subsequent days. Was that for your comfort or for some uh, scientific reason? Jake Shane, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. It was very cold that night, so it, w it was difficult to, to process. It was very windy, but it was for a purely scientific standpoint of doing the necessary steps of collecting whatever I needed and I deemed fragile, collect that stuff, and then let's get it into an enclosed trailer and transport to a secure facility that's nearby. So what items, if you uh, recall, did you remove that you had deemed fragile? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. There were first some items that were in the yards or yard of this particular residence, some examination gloves and a winter hat that was in the backyard. So those items were collected. Uh, of particular interest on the vehicle was the headband um, that was around the <coughs> driver door mirror that was broken. So that was important to collect because during transport, that might leave, most likely would have fallen off. So that's what I'm talking about, fragile evidence. Okay. So that item was removed? Correct. Uh, what about the front bumper? We saw that laying on the, on the uh, driveway. Was that secured in some fashion? Objection, yeah. leading. <laughs> yes, to make transport easy, the bumper would have had to be lifted up with bungee cords and resecured. Otherwise, as the tow company is moving the vehicle, the bumper would just continue to go underneath the vehicle, further damaging or maybe even eliminating or getting rid of physical evidence that might be on that bumper. So were you the person that secured that front bumper? I, had, I was there and I assisted with the tow company. Okay. Where'd you take it? Well, Bitch Boy Brooks, objection, 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 hearsay, speculative, I mean, come on, dude. Let it fucking go. 
this is what you did, dumbass. This is not hearsay. This is not, um, like, I don't know, whatever you're trying to object to. No. He is speaking facts. He is speaking because he went to the vehicle. He processed it. So shut your damn mouth. I hope they put you in general population, you idiot. I know you're writing them damn uh, complaint or inmate forms to the warden because your dumbass is afraid to go into general population. And if I was you, I'd be afraid too because I can guarantee you that the men there already knew you were coming and they already have plans. So <laughs> I would be scared too if I were you. So it was taken from this residence and it was taken to Waukesha County Sheriff's Office secured facility. Is that nearby here in Waukesha? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna, um, ask <coughs> Madam Clerk if you could turn off the display, please, and I'm going to uh, present to the witness only another series of photographs, starting with 105. Go ahead. Do you know how many? Eight. Sequential? Uh, yes, 105 through 112. Thank you. Objection. I would see. Well, I haven't seen them yet, so I'll have to wait, but you can put them up and then I'll make a ruling. I think we're ready on our end. We're just waiting for Madam Clark. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> I'll leave it alone. You hit it. We've <laughs> just nixed each other twice. Five. One oh five. Given what I see on the screen, the objection is overruled. Okay. And, Your Honor, for the sake of time, I'm just going to ask the witness to look through these photos just as if he had them in front of him, and then I'll um, ask some foundational questions. So, 105 is on the screen. Do you see it, sir? Yes. Do you need more time to review that photo? No. 106, please. Yes. Do you need more time to review that photo? Objection no. leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. 107? Yes. Do you need more time? No. 108? Yes. Do you need more time? No. 109? Yes. Need more time? No. 110? Yes, I recognize, and I don't need more time. 111? I recognize and I don't need more time. And 112? I recognize that photo and don't need any more time. Where were each of these photos taken? Each of these photos were taken at that secure facility that where Waukesha County Sheriff's Office, their secured facility. This is indoors at that facility. Okay. And do you believe each of these photos is a true and accurate representation of what the vehicle looked like once you towed it to the secure facility? Yes. <clears throat> a move for admission of 105 through 112 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Jay Shane. <coughs> Noted. Exhibits 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, and 112 are all received permission to publish granted as to all. So in this photograph, sir, is the, uh, what's the condition of the front bumper, please? The Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. The front bumper is secured in somewhat, should be its original position with those bungee cords that we previously talked about. Okay. <clears throat> Next 106, please. Please describe. Overall photograph, uh, the <coughs> front driver's quarter panel, including um, showing the hood damage. Was there an effort by you to try and match the pieces of the bumper to the frame of the body, or is that just the way it came together? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. 
Go ahead, you may answer. At this time, I was not trying to physically match anything together. It was just for the purpose of securing it for transport. Okay. What is the uh, position of the driver's side window in this photograph, sir? The window is down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Objection. Okay. Overruled, the witness may answer. He responded to the scene where the vehicle was located and can testify based upon his knowledge. 107, please. Please describe. An overall photograph from the point view of the front passenger side of the vehicle. Next, 108. Objection. Overruled. Please describe. An overview of the front of the vehicle, including the front passenger quarter panel and the front passenger door. What position was the front passenger window in? Down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Okay. 109. Please describe. An overall photograph of the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, Including, including in this photograph is the front quarter panel, the front passenger door, and the rear passenger door. And uh, along the, the front passenger door and the rear passenger door, do you see? The window is down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Objection. Okay. Overruled, the witness may answer. He responded to the scene where the vehicle was located and can testify based upon his knowledge. 107, please. Please describe. An overall photograph from the point view of the front passenger side of the vehicle. Next, 108. Objection. Overruled. Please describe. An overview of the front of the vehicle, including the front passenger quarter panel and the front passenger door. What position was the front passenger window in? Down. Is that the way you found it? Yes. Okay. 109, please describe. An overall photograph of the passenger side of the vehicle, um, including, including in this photograph is the front quarter panel, the front passenger door, and the rear passenger door. And uh, along the, the front passenger door and the rear passenger door, do you see anything remarkable? Objection leading. Overruled. Uh, spanning the length of both doors is uh, quite a significant scratch. Have you seen scratches like that before in processing motor vehicles, sir? Objection relevancy. Overruled. I have. What is that consistent with, please? Objection leading. Overruled. Coming into contact with another item. Thank you. Uh, number 110. Why are you looking up to the sky? Or the ceiling, I should say. Because you know what? God didn't help you, did he? You needed to be punished. You were punished. And now you'll be sitting in prison for the rest of your life. So I don't know if you even pray to God or if that was just for show. But you know what I thought also when I seen this, you guys? Like, I'm short too. And he is damn short for a man, in my opinion. So he has to look up to people to talk to them. And it's like he's looking up to someone talking to them. I don't know. He's just... <laughs> I don't know. And anybody in my comments that's saying uh, you're, you are um, acting on emotion, not law, well, yeah, that's good because my channel is not a, oh, I'm a lawyer, I'm going to um, critique this and say what law was broken and what law wasn't and all that. Well... Well, it's good, um, you know, yes, that I 
react to these on emotion. You're damn right I do. This man is a sick son of a bitch who needs to go to hell, actually under hell. That's where he needs to go. That is my opinion. I will not change my opinion for anybody. It's, it's not going to happen at all. He killed a child, a little boy, eight-year-old, and he killed five other adults. And you say, act on law? Well, guess what? Was he acting on law when he put on the Internet, on Facebook, that he was going to knock white people the fuck out, especially old white people? And it just so happens that five of these people that passed away were over the age of 50. So, fuck yes, I'm acting on emotion. If you don't like it, don't watch my damn channel. Period. Point blank. Please describe. An overall, overall photograph showing the rear of the passenger side of the vehicle. Spe specifically noting that the rear passenger window um, that window is not down, it was actually shattered, okay. broken, um, and also showing in this photograph are two apparent fired bullet defects. Okay, I have some other photos uh, more specific to that in a minute. Um, thank you. 111? <clears throat> Objection. Overruled. Please describe. An overall photograph from the vantage point of the rear passenger side of the vehicle. And then 112, please. Objection. Overruled. And overall of the vehicle from vantage point, rear driver side of the vehicle. <clears throat> is the rear driver side window, what position is it in, please? That is up. And is that the way you found it? Yes. And it looks like there's a substance on the exterior of the vehicle on the driver's side. Do you see what I'm referring to, sir? Objection, leading. Um, overall, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Do you know what that item or substance was? Objection, speculative. Overruled, based upon his training and experience and his personal observation of the vehicle, he may answer. Not knowing what specific fluid that might be, I did do a presumptive test to see if it's possibly blood. Okay. All tests that I did of that liquid that's on the driver's side came back negative for okay. the possible presence of blood. And was it um, <clears throat> sprayed along the most of the driver's side of the vehicle? Objection, speculative. Overruled. Yes. Okay. Now, I'd like to um, move on, sir, and ask you, did you do an interior inspection of the vehicle? Yes. And an exterior inspection of the vehicle? Correct. I'd like to... Um, highlight some specific areas, um, starting with the interior of the vehicle. Would you have processed the entire uh, passenger compartment and cargo space of this vehicle? Yes. And what types of things would you have been looking for, sir? Based on my former experience, um, looking for surface types that might contain potential DNA evidence. So specifically, anything that's in the vehicle that would have been handled uh, to control the vehicle or handled in a repetitive manner or with some kind of force. So for example, the steering wheel, the gear shifter, those items were swabbed by myself for the potential of DNA. We also looked at surfaces within the vehicle and process those for the possible presence of latent fingerprints. Do you remember uh, locating an object on the front passenger seat of the vehicle? It must have been like hard for him to process that whole scene there with the vehicle considering that's what was used to kill six people and almost kill 61 others. It, it's just crazy to me that you, bitch boy Brooks, object, 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 object. Why couldn't you have just accepted your 
punishment for what you did and not go to trial and not have these victims and survivors have to go through this full trial and deal with seeing pictures and videos of their loved ones getting hit. And then this man here. I know that if I was in his shoes and I had to process that vehicle, I would have cried. Because you know damn well there's probably blood on there and stuff like that. And, I mean, it's just, you could just tell that BBB has no, he, he doesn't respect anyone. People say that he only respects himself. I totally believe that. He's a worthless piece of shit that doesn't realize that, he, I don't know, I don't think he realizes how evil, vile, and, and disgusting he actually is. Because he is. Yes. I'm going to ask that uh, we display to the witness only Exhibit 117. Do you recognize what's shown in Exhibit 117, sir? Yes, there's a hat that's on the front passenger seat cushion. Is that the way the object looked when you found it? Yes. Uh, move to admit 117 permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Exhibit 117 is received. Permission to publish. Granted. Could you please, uh, it's a touch screen in front of you, circle the hat that you just described for the jury. That's his TV, you guys. Do you think he was uh, watching TV in, the, in his home, in his SUV home? Do you think he was uh, watching the TV in there? I mean, you know, I don't know, maybe, right? I just and then uh, to your left sir on the witness stand before you uh, took the stand I placed an item up there that's been marked as exhibit number 87 you see that on the table there yes can you identify exhibit 87 <laughs> yes this is the winter style hat that I collected from that front passenger seat Okay. I'd like to uh, show another photograph to the witness, Exhibit 118, please. Objection. Overruled. Go ahead. Do you recognize the object in Exhibit 118? <clears throat> I do. Do you believe this photo is a true and accurate representation of the object as you uh, found it on the vehicle? I do. Overruled. Um, your answer may stand again. Just wait until I rule on the objection, please. Move to admit 118, permission to publish. <laughs> Exhibit 118 is received, permission to publish granted. Please describe. This is a close-up photograph of the clothing items that were pinned to the windshield by the crumpled hood and it was being held in place by that hood being pinning the items against the windshield as well as that wiper arm. Okay. Did you eventually remove these items? Yes. What did you find them to be? It was a detachable hood from a jacket as well as a winter hat. And can you just point out on the touch screen which is which? Objection leading. Overruled. That's the hood portion and that's the, the hat portion. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Did you find any U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, I did. 
were there any names associated with the U.S. mail or paperwork inside the vehicle? Objection, really. <coughs> Overruled, the witness may answer. I mean, this is just crazy. First, they show that, which was a hat, and then he has it right there. That's the hat he has in his hand. And then, like, look at, I still can't believe he has that TV right there, you guys. That, it's like he was either going to pawn it or he watches, uh, he watches TV in there somehow. But this, Jenny, dang it. This is Jenny Sorensen's, uh, hat that was attached to her jacket that was, like, detachable. And then there was the other hat. And, um, uh, let's see if I can get this here. Okay. So, that's one part. And then there's this white one right there. But right there is, like, the black with white snowflake hat. And that was uh, Virginia Sorensen's hat. It's so sad to me that, and pathetic of Bitch Boy Brooks, that he shows no emotion during this trial as far as, like, remorse or anything. The only time he cried was, and, and he made himself cry. I, I mean, it's all his fault. So, yeah, he made himself cry. He only cried because he is no longer free. He will no longer be free ever. And he won't be kicking it with his friend Michelle, you know, the one that helps him all the time. And he won't be able to uh, harass Erica anymore, which I'm very happy about. That woman did not deserve the abuse that he gave to her. And he's just a pathetic excuse of a man that's... He, decent men don't do that shit. Running over people... What did one of the witnesses say? He was running over people like they were speed bumps. I mean, anybody who is related to this deadbeat good for nothing son of a bitch, well, I don't know if you guys are happy you never have to deal with his ass again, but I can guarantee, I can guarantee you he's been trying to boss people around on the outside. I bet you he tried to call Erica, you know, I'm going to have to ask her, get a hold of her. Erica, if you see this, please leave a message under my uh, um, this video. I would like to talk to you. One-on-one, um, -on -one, that's all, you know, over the phone. But I'm very happy for you, Erica, because you are worth more than what the hell he gave you for all them years. All he did to you was abuse you and then he had the nerve to say during the interrogation that he loved Erica but she didn't love him back are you fucking kidding me that's why she met up with you that day you guys were arguing but she was still willing to meet up with you that day you guys have a child and a grandchild now I'm just happy he's not out to abuse Erica anymore. He's pathetic. Yes. What was that name? Daryl E. Brooks Jr. Was there an address, if you can recall? Objection. Rather receive. Overruled. The witness may answer. There was, but I can't. I don't exactly recall it. Sure. <coughs> also on the table next to you, sir, is your report that I've marked as exhibit number 90. Do you see that? Yes. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. <coughs> Placed on the table. Go ahead, attorney Opper. Well, objection. How did it get on the table? Um, your objections noted. It's overruled. Um, <coughs> record will reflect that um, there's a copy of a crime lab report. It has an exhibit sticker, number 90, with the case number of this case. Um, handing it back to the witness. 
Go ahead. You may question. How did he get it on the table? Who put who placed it on the table? That's attorney that's Opera indicated picture. she placed it there. When did that happen? Attorney Opera, go ahead. Continue. Did you author this report, sir? Yes, I did. If you uh, review the report, would you be able to see the address for uh, Daryl Brooks that was noted in the paperwork from the inside of the SUV? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Please do. Overruled. Yes, I would. Please do that, sir. Objection. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule. The witness may answer. Grounds for the overrule. Go ahead, sir. The address for the pieces of mail that I recovered was 4014 North 19th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53209. Thank you. Objection. That should be striked. He, when he asked the question, he said he didn't recall. So how can you force somebody to recall? Oh. The witnesses recollection was refreshed through the use of his report which he indicated he documented the address your objections noted it's overruled the answer will stand go ahead next question please yes and actually if i could back up one minute and ask miss gussie to put back up 117 i have to ask a question about 117. go ahead and if we could display it please madam clerk <laughs> Nobody got to answer no questions. Mr. Brooks, please refrain from interrupting. You'll have an opportunity to I, ask your questions. I have an objection of how, evident, how stuff got to the table without my knowledge. That that should be known. That should at least be noted for the record. It was I wouldn't be for I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead, Attorney Opera. Yeah. So that needs to stop in, happening. In it needs addition to, to the hat. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury. All right, All right for the jury. Can't keep doing stuff with, without. It should be a fair trial. That's my right. You shouldn't be able to do things without my knowledge. And then pass it off to the jury like that's fair. They deserve to know that too. As soon as the jury's out, I'll make a record. All right, Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the reason documents that are name. being put on the I don't consent to being called that name. Are because this court indicated it would limit the movement of the parties due to your custodial status to keep things fair. And I merely asked, how did it get there? Sir, do not, not interrupt me or I'm you will forfeit your right to, to know be how present it got there? in this courtroom. So do you holding me in contempt? Me. Are you holding me in contempt? You are so fucking disrespectful, you piece of shit. I don't consent to being called bad name. And then you get louder because she didn't stop what she was doing to address little bitch boy Brooks, baby bitch boy Brooks. You're, mm, 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 mm. You know damn well why you cannot walk up to that damn uh, witness table area, whatever. You know damn well the reason you cannot do that. First of all, just because you played as your own lawyer does not mean you get to do everything a lawyer gets to do. You're a fucking inmate. You cannot just walk up to that table and do that. For safety and security of the people in the courtroom. And you know that. Your little grab at attention and you whining like a little bitch is pathetic. And then trying to make it sound as if that nothing is fair and all that shit. You know damn well everything was done to benefit you, to help you, so that it was as fair as they could possibly get it. 
So you whining and crying about the fact that there is a piece of, not a piece of paper, but his fucking report up there. You can't make somebody recall. Well, you sure tried to make all these damn witnesses recall something. You're pathetic. And your grab at attention is pathetic. Loser. I'm gonna make a record. Are you holding me in contempt? I'm not answering your questions. So then you're not holding me in contempt. Do not interrupt me again or you will go to the other courtroom. Under what lawful law? All right, he's interrupted me once again. Um, we're gonna clear the courtroom. He's being disrespectful. I'll make a record once he moves. Unless you can promise me right now that you let me make my record without you interrupting me, sir. You gonna make your record? You can make your record. Then please don't interrupt me. Don't hold me in contempt. I've never said any such thing. Removing me for the courtroom, Your Honor, is essentially holding me in contempt. All right. No, you're forfeiting your right to be present under Illinois versus Allen. I, I didn't forfeit anything. I will, I'm going to start talking, and if he interrupts, then I will close this courtroom, and he will be taken to the next courtroom. Mr. Brooks, you are well aware that the court made some pretrial uh, rulings related to whether there would be... They can stay in. I haven't closed it yet. He's not interrupting me. Whether the parties could approach the witness stand and I did that because you're in custody and I'm not going to allow you to approach the witness stand while in custody. Um, that is why uh, various precautions have taken place uh, to limit frankly that from happening. Um, throughout this trial um, there was one instance at the very beginning of the case where I allowed the state to approach a witness. I corrected that. That hasn't happened since. We've had bailiffs take items up to the witness stand, or the items have been given to the witnesses, or they've been placed on the witness stand. That's proper. There is nothing uh, wrong about that. Nobody's trying to pull a fast one over you. No one is doing something that's not permitted uh, by this court, or frankly, under the rules of decorum and courtesy or the presentation of evidence in this case. Frankly, from my perspective, sir, your attempts and your comments are to try to dig in at this jury and to somehow create doubt about the presentation of this case or the fairness of these proceedings uh, without the party, meaning the state, having an opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. I've taken the jury out at this point to admonish you that any further mumbling under your breath um, or not recognizing when I uphold or sustain an objection that I will take as a disrupting interruption meant to disrupt the proceedings. I'm not holding you in contempt. I'm well aware that that's one of my options. I choose not to do it for the reasons that I've stated on the record previously. All right, you can forfeit your right to be present at any point in time during this trial by your conduct under Illinois versus Allen. When it is disruptive, when it uh, does not follow the simple rules of courtesy and decorum, I draw your attention once again to SCR chapter 62, um, which has been previously provided to you, which is under the statute there. Um, these constant mumbling and interruptions for the, during the proceedings. I haven't made a record of them today, but I will now. Started at 9.01, then there was five at 9.02, three at 9.03, four at 9.04, one at 9.05, sorry, two at 9.05, one at 9.06, uh, three at 9.08, again at 9.17, 9.27, 10.31, 105, there was talking over by you at 2.03, five, interruptions at 214, 215, 217, at 219, um, audible muttering, 231, 233, what I would describe as inappropriate, like muttering under your breath, 235, at 306, there was the hilarious comment, at 311, there was what I would describe as arguing about the muttering and the irony of it all, at 312, there were four interruptions, at 337, um, more 409, 410, more mumbling at 411, twice, and at 412, um, nine uh, different times.
for you to get pissed off bitch boy Brooks because Sue Opper, attorney Sue Opper, was able to put the paper on the witness stand and, and you got all up in arms. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. How did the paper get there? Like, you're trying to put doubt in the, these jury's head, this jury's head. Guess what? It didn't work, bitch boy. So shut the fuck up, sit down, because you're going to be there a while. All them damn interruptions. My eight-year-old frickin' follows rules more than you could ever. My eight-year-old is more mature than you, for sure. My eight-year-old's pinky toe is smarter than you, for sure. So, I think I've made an ample record of the disruptions today. I've been abundantly patient with you. Um, I've, again, as I stated earlier, I've even limited how I tell these things to the jury about how to disregard, and I simply say the jury is to disregard comments and statements made by the parties or the lawyers as those are not evidence. So I'm warning you, do not interrupt again when if this jury comes back or when they come back and you do that, uh, then uh, you will be removed and you will forfeit your right to be present for the examination of this witness. Let's bring the jury back in. Well, well you might as well remove me then because you, what you're doing is, is, is not fair. I can't even rebut what you're saying. I didn't interrupt you. I let you make your incorrect record. Mr. Brooks, I'm bringing the jury out and we're continuing. We're going to get through these witnesses. It, okay. And I'm not stopping you through from doing that. Through your behavior, you're not going to delay these you, proceedings it, today. I'm not trying to delay continue. the proceedings. So I wish you would stop being incorrect on the record and saying what I'm trying to do if you don't know that. You don't Mr. know what Brooks, I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm bringing the jury out. I'm not going to argue with you. Then, so. then don't. Because I'm not arguing with you either. I'm stating facts. You're raising your voice. It's because very Because I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you always making a record. At me. You're making a record of me trying to look bad. I know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. I'm making a record of what's accurately being You're making done a record of incorrect statements. That's what you're doing. You're not making a record of Mr. not Brooks, being I'm able. I'm advising you to be quiet because the jury's coming back you're out. You're advising me to be quiet? Is you telling I'm me to be quiet? I'm advising you to be respectful when the jury comes Are you comes telling out? me to be quiet or are you asking me? I'm asking you and advising okay. you. Okay, thank you for correcting that, because don't nobody tell me what to do. I don't tell nobody else what to do. I'd appreciate we're all you. We're all adults in here. I've never told you to sir. do anything at all. Lord, sir, I'd appreciate if your tone of voice would change. I, I would appreciate if you would ask me. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Don't nobody, ain't nobody going to talk to me like that. Nobody. I don't have a problem with doing what you ask me to do, not tell me. Just like when I ask you about subject matter jurisdiction that you have yet to prove on the record. But somehow I'm being intentionally disruptive. Of, uh, come on, man. Stop. Just stop it. Jury's right. coming out. All right for the jury. Not going to work. I'm supposed to be scared again, removed or something. You say you don't tell people what to do, they'll have to crack the fucking shit. Erica's an adult, and you told her what to do for 16 years. And you say you don't tell them what to do, you don't tell the judge what to do. Yes, the fuck you do, you lying SOB. Yes, the fuck you do. No one can tell me what to do. I'm a grown man with grown kids. Well, guess what? You're gonna get, you're gonna, uh, or you already have some grown ass prison time. How does that feel, bitch boy? You are the most disrespectful piece of shit I have ever fucking seen in my life. Talking to the judge like that? And then got this big ass attitude t towards her and she asked you nicely to like tone it down and you said, if you ask me, who the fuck do you think you are? Jesus. No one said that you were going to be scared or even insinuated that you were going to be scared if you got removed from the courtroom. Nor do they give a fuck if you were going to be scared. You were going to get put in that courtroom whether you fucking liked it or not, bitch boy. Looking at the judge, 
I'm gonna um, put an arrow. Okay. Look at him. You see how he's looking at the judge, you guys? Just keep watching that shit, man. He does it all the time, it seems like. Bitch boy, Brooks, I know you want to hurt her, but guess what? If you had even ever tried to touch that woman, you would be taken down so fucking quick. I would have loved to see you fucking get taken down, like, freaking held down by these officers, dude. Because you are not a strong fucking person. You pick on the weak and the vulnerable, and that's all you do, bitch. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Statement continue its examination of this witness. I believe we're on Exhibit 117. Yes, we have 117. If Madam Clerk, would you please turn the display back on? Mr. Johnson, were there other items on the front passenger seat? You guys, look at the way he's fucking looking at her. He is a fucking lunatic. Look at him. I really honestly believe that if he would have ever had a chance to hurt her, he would have. And people, you know, wonder why I say or why I, I call him certain names. I've seen the comments. It's just crazy. Like, does this guy not look like a fucking lunatic? I mean, look at him. He's eyeing her like he sees her as like, like he's a, a vicious animal and he just wants to tear her up. Hey, dude, you're fucking nuts and I'm writing you a letter and I hope to God you read it and not read one of them fucking prison wife letters because I, I'm pretty damn sure you get that too because there's bitches out here that are desperate enough to write you and want to marry your dumb ass, I'm sure. Because it happens with every damn uh, person that gets a big amount of time where their shit was publicized. Yeah. That's just crazy in and of itself. It's like, I don't, I don't know, whatever. That's just crazy, though. And he looks so vicious, like, like, evil here. Well, he looks evil anyway, but when he eyes her like this, it's like, I worry about her. It's crazy. It's like, this trial is already over. But I see him look at her like that, and I have, like, I feel like a sense of, like, like, I need to protect her or something, which obviously I don't need to. Her husband, her police officer husband will protect her. But, oh, my God. I get the creepy crawlies when I see his eyes like this. Like, he's looking at her like he wants to hurt her. In my opinion. Besides the blue winter hat. Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. I do recall a cell phone being present on that front passenger seat. Do you remember what kind of cell phone? An iPhone. I also see uh, some items that look like maybe headphones or a charging cable, something like that. Do you see that, Objection sir? leading. Overruled, foundational. The witness may answer the exhibits previously. <coughs> Objection speculative. Overruled. I do see that. Do you remember something like that on the front passenger seat? Yes. Okay. And how about on the floorboard of the front passenger seat? Is there an item there, sir? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. Yes. What do you remember that item was? A TV. Okay. And to the left of the TV, the white colored object? I don't recall what that is. Okay. But this is the exact way the passenger seat looked when you recovered the vehicle, correct? That's correct. Okay. Now if we could please go to Exhibit 116 and put up for the witness only. Sir, do you see Exhibit 116 in front of you? Hey, bitch boy Brooks. He's talking about how messy your house is and you don't like the, uh, to hear about it. You don't want the jury and the world to know that you're a disgusting fucking pig. 
Too late, bitch boy. Too fucking late. I do. Do you recognize this photograph? I do. Do you believe this to be a true and accurate depiction of the interior of the SUV? Yes. Move to admit 116, permission to publish. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Exhibit 17, excuse me, Exhibit 116 is received. Permission to publish is granted. What's in the uh, photo of 116, please? This is an overview of the rear passenger seat. Um, that rear passenger compartment contained several clothing items and miscellaneous items. Okay. And uh, was the... Um, Condition of the back seat like this when you found the vehicle, sir. Objection, speculative. Overruled the witness may answer based upon his knowledge of recovering the vehicle from the scene and his training and experience. Yes. Now for the witness only, I'm going to please ask uh, Ms. Gussie to put up 113, 114, and 115 for his review. Remember uh, when Gerald Brooks' mom did one, like an interview with the news outside. She had a jacket on with fur, um, like fur around the hood part. Well, what about that right there? To me, it looks like, like the hood of her jacket. She had that furry brown like stuff on her hood. Or on her hat, I should say. Um, it's just crazy. Look at his back seat, you guys. I mean, come on. That shit is gross as fuck. I don't even know what all that shit is, but damn, dude. That's gross. <coughs> Go ahead. 113 up? Yes. Okay, do you recognize that item? I do. Okay. Next, 114. Do you recognize 114? Yes. And 115, do you recognize 115? There it is. I do. Okay. Do you believe these three uh, photographs truly and accurately depict uh, the vehicle, these areas of the vehicle, sir? Yes. Uh, move to admit 113, 114, and 115, permission to publish. <coughs> Exhibits 113, 114, and 115 are all received permission to publish. Granted. Please. Oh. Jury would let me know when the jury box monitors are on. All right, thank you very much. All right, please describe 113, sir. That is an apparent fired bullet defect that's in the windshield of the Ford Escape. Is that the rear view mirror on the left side of the picture? Yes, this photograph would be from the inside looking through the windshield. Were you able to tell the path of travel for the bullet? Yes. Yes, speculative. Please describe. Overruled, you may answer. Yes. The, the fired bullet that caused this defect most likely was came through that rear passenger window that was shattered and entered the vehicle and then exited the vehicle through the windshield. So that's a ex exit damage that we're seeing there? Yes. How can you be sure? Windshields have laminated, laminated glass and so the directionality of a fire bullet going through laminate glass, there's an indicative laminate tag we call it. So that shows the direction of the fire bullet. Okay. Number 114 please. Please describe. That's an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a striking defect. That's on the roof rail of the passenger side of the vehicle. Okay. Why do you call it a striking defect? It didn't penetrate any part of the vehicle. Well, to see like where the bullets or whatever went or how they struck the vehicle and all that was kind of interesting. I think that there's that they only mentioned three. Let's see. There's one. Let's see. There's two. Yeah. Then there's one more, and I think it 
I can't believe that. He, I mean, he is lucky because that dude shot, his shots landed, I mean, like, if it would have been any more close, the bullets, I mean, if they would have been any more close, they would have hit him. So, uh, and nobody would have felt bad, I don't think, because of what you had created downtown, in downtown Waukesha that day. It's, it's pathetic. It's, I don't know, just because you don't like a certain colored person doesn't mean that, hey, let's try to kill them all. That's the most ridiculous shit ever, dude. We need to quit with that type of shit. We need to come together. That shit is just ridiculous. It was a more of a glancing kind of ricochet. Okay. And then uh, number 115. And if you could zoom in on that uh, back left. Yep, thank you. <coughs> Please describe. This is a, a, an apparent fired bullet defect. I call this a perforating defect because it actually went through the exterior door skin and went all the way through into the inside of the vehicle. Did you ever find the, uh, the fired round in the vehicle? Yes, I did recover a fired bullet and fired bullet fragment from the rear cargo area of the vehicle. Okay. Was there any evidence that that bullet traveled any further than the cargo area of the SUV. Objection, respectfully to you. Overruled, based upon the witness's training and experience and examination of the vehicle, he may answer. No, the bullet stayed in that rear cargo area. Okay. Now, aside from um, examining the interior and the exterior of the vehicle at ground level, did you attempt to look underneath the vehicle? Yes, the first processing strategy if we go back to that I wanted to get everything collected from all sides of the vehicle and inside of the vehicle before putting it on a vehicle lift to examine the undercarriage of the vehicle so you did do that yes what kinds of things are you looking for on the undercarriage looking for anything that shouldn't be normally present on the undercarriage of the vehicle so I was looking for any hairs fibers any potential biological fluids such as blood? Did you find any such objects? Objection leading. Overrule. You, he may answer. Yes, I did. Did you collect those items? Yes, I did. You had described for us earlier um, swabbing of the steering wheel on the interior of the vehicle. Do you recall that? Objection yes. leading. Um, overrule. The witness may answer. How do you go about swabbing a steering wheel, sir? Objection. What's the relevancy? Overruled. The witness may answer. The best way to collect DNA evidence from a surface is to use a two swab technique. The first swab is a swab that's slightly moistened with uh, deionized water and basically swabbing the surface and then following up that swab with a dry swab. So it's a two swab process, a wet swab followed by a dry swab, and that becomes one item of evidence. Same thing for the gear shift? Yes. What do you do with these swabs after you collect them? I put them into the appropriate container um, and then seal that container, write my description of that particular item of evidence, and eventually that evidence is transferred to a unit at the crime laboratory for analysis. In this particular case, those items, anything for DNA, is going to be transferred to, to the DNA analysis unit. Did that happen? Yes, that did. And how about the uh, hat, States Exhibit 87? Uh, did that get transferred to another unit for further analysis, to your knowledge? Yes, yeah, so any clothing item that's Hold called? On. There was an objection. Oh, Grounds? Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may continue answering. Clothing items that are worn by individuals are a really good source of transfer of DNA. So yes, I collected that hat and it was transferred to the DNA analysis unit.
you made reference to a headband being on the um, the rear view driver's side mirror, correct? Correct, it was on the driver's door mirror. And from your expertise, how would you, in your opinion, guess that it got there? By coming into contact with something or someone that was wearing it. And do you know that for sure? No, but based off of my experience of a lot of years of examination of physical items of evidence. But it'd be fair to say that you don't know exactly. No, I wasn't at the parade. I wasn't. No. And you stated that you were present for the towing of the vehicle, correct? Yes. Do you recall at any time anyone uh, attempting to start the vehicle? No. And you stated that the bumper was, I guess, moved at some point so it wouldn't drag under the vehicle. I'm, I'm guessing that's what you said. If I'm wrong, you can. No, that's correct. Yeah, we, we used bungee cords to secure it off the ground so that when we're moving it or putting it on the flatbed to go to, to the actual enclosed trailer that it wouldn't be constantly going underneath the vehicle. When towing the vehicle, what was it placed on? Because of the amount of traffic or cars that were parked on the road, we couldn't, the towing company couldn't get the enclosed trailer right to the end of the driveway. So the vehicle was put onto a flatbed truck and then driven a few houses down where then it was transferred to an enclosed trailer and then removed from the scene. So with the bumper, being that it was first placed on a flatbed truck, as you say, at that time with the bumper hat, what, what, what problem with the bumper had caused if it wasn't going to be physically dragged or, or anything at that point? I'm not sure I understand your question. What, what kind of problem with the bumper pose if the vehicle was on a, on a flatbed truck? The whole point essentially, is... Essentially what I'm saying is to give you more clarity, how could the bumper be dragged at that point? It was being removed from the surface of the driveway onto the flatbed. So if the bumper weren't secured in an upright position, it would be pulled and the bumper, as the vehicle is going this way, the bumper would be pulled underneath the vehicle. So once it was secured on the flatbed truck, would the bumper still pose any problem? The, the vehicle on the flatbed, the bumper was in a secure position. If it wasn't bungee corded, would it have posed a problem? Yes. How so if it wasn't moving? Hey, and bitch boy Brooks, you are so damn disrespectful. You're asking how does he know that the headband, first you asked in his opinion how does he think it got there, so he gave his opinion, and then you said, are you, are you sure? You had just asked his opinion. You didn't ask him if he knew for sure. You asked for his opinion. He gave you his opinion, and he was correct. And it's just pathetic that you ask a question, the person answers the question, and then you go ahead and ask, are you for sure? I just got to hear something real quick. It is was being removed, removed from okay, the truck. The whole purpose was to secure the bumper in place to preserve any physical evidence that might have been on the bumper. And you, do you recall who did the actual towing? The company is complete towing and recovery. And you stated to want to get the vehicle to a <laughs> envir environmentally friendly, secure location? Yeah, a better term would be environmentally controlled. 
But what, what do you mean by environmentally controlled? Proper lighting uh, outside of the elements, outside of view of the public, so an enclosed building. Why the reference to outside of the public? It's easier to do examinations in a controlled environment. Would it be fair to say at that time, before it was told, the, the, the vehicle had been uh, secured, uh, checked, that was done that was done out in public so what would be the difference at that point I'm going to go back to my original statement of what my primary duty is my primary duty is to preserve the integrity of the evidence so that night I was concerned with doing the necessary steps that I deemed relevant to collect and then get that vehicle to a more suitable environment just based off of how much more work and analysis and processing that vehicle would entail. Fundamentally, I follow, uh, I follow what you're saying fundamentally. The question though is, by the time you arrived to the scene where the vehicle was located, were you aware that the vehicle had essentially been already investigated? No. So you had no knowledge that the vehicle had been secured, had been um, pretty much investigated by that point? Well, I was aware that the vehicle was in a secured state. I don't know what happened prior to that. It was very little information that I received on the initial phone call because of the hectic nature of everything. So I had an address and I knew that the vehicle was being secured by law enforcement. So law enforcement were present when you arrived to the scene? Yes. And at that time you had learned, no, uh, did you learn any knowledge from the law enforcement other than what you were told during the phone call? No. Do you recall who you were called by? I was called by special agent in charge, Dave Clavundi of the Division of Criminal Investigations. <laughs> Do you recall what time you arrived at the scene? I arrived at approximately 8.15 p.m. Do you recall what time the vehicle was found? I don't recall. <laughs> Do you recall anyone telling you or mention, mentioning what time the vehicle had been found? I don't recall. So it'd be fair to say before you arrived on the scene. BBB, bitch boy, Brooks. Asking him all these damn questions, you could tell that he was talking about as slow as he could to hopefully get you to understand what he was saying. But because you're such a fucking dumbass, it seemed as if that was not going to happen fundamentally. Dumbass. Fundamentally, this, this, uh, do you think because that's, that word has, like, a lot of letters, it makes you sound smarter? Because you look like an idiot, like you always probably have, and like you always did in the trial, and you're just fucking disrespectful in every sense of the word. This man wanted to make sure he did this case justice. And he did everything he needed to do to process this SUV that was used to kill six and injure over 60 others. You worthless piece of shit. And you purposely try to get under people's skin. I can't fucking stand you. And I bet your damn mother and your, and your, uh, well, maybe your grandmother can, but I don't even know. 
but your mom is your enabler, so I'm sure she can stand you. Because somehow you have her believing that you did not, you know, you didn't purposely injure these people. How the hell did you not person, person, <laughs> how did you not do this shit on purpose? Like, how could she even say that? You hit one, and you kept going and hit how many more? I mean, come on, dude. And, Don, you're in fucking denial. Your son is a worthless piece of shit. You have no knowledge of what's been happening around the vehicle. That's correct. Say you you made reference to a hat being found in the background. Do you do you remember saying that? Or in the backyard, rather. I'm sorry, not the background. The backyard. I meant to say. Yes. And at the time that you observed this hat in the backyard, do you, from your expert opinion, do you recall it? having any relevance to the vehicle? No, it, it was um, an item of evidence or an I a potential item of evidence that just seemed out of place. So in that, those types of situations, I always collect those types of items. But you weren't sure at the time <laughs> if it had any involvement with the actual vehicle? No. Was there anything significant that stood out about the hat? Just the location. Did you find any blood on the hat? Did you find, or is it just pretty much just a hat in the backyard? I didn't do a thorough, thorough examination of the hat. So as far as you, you were concerned, you, you, it was basically just taking in the evidence as a precautionary thing or? Yeah, it was an item that just seemed out of place. So I collected that hat. Did you at any time obtain knowledge about the relevancy of that? No. the uh, photographs that you were shown, had you seen those photographs before today? Yes. Do you recall if they were taken the same night of your investigation or multiple nights or days rather? There were multiple days. And do you recall why you had to, or do you recall why those photos had to be taken over a multiple day span? Yes, the vehicle needed a comprehensive evaluation or processing examination of pretty much every single side and surface of that vehicle. And to do that uh, photograph wise would have took days? Yes. So when did you start um, when did you start actually um, do an investigation of the items inside of the vehicle. That would have been the 22nd, November 22nd. So the next, the next day. Correct. And so did you yourself do a uh, analyst of the outside of the vehicle? Yes. Same day, 22nd of November? Yes. So you kind of started the outside and the inside pretty much roughly at the same time. Yes. <clears throat> One thing you need to quit fucking doing, dumbass bitch boy Brooks, is closing one eye and opening the other and wrinkling your damn forehead. It makes you look pathetic. Maybe that's because you are pathetic looking. But come on, dude. I don't know if you think you look cute like that, but please fucking quit.
But golly gee, he started it at the same time, dumbass. I just cannot stand you mentioning the hat that he decided to take as evidence just because it seemed out of place. Why the hell would you ask if the hat had blood on it? Did did you think that it could have possibly um, been on your vehicle and it could have been from one of the freaking over 60 people that you hit? I mean, that, that could have been very possible. Considering you drove from the parade to that parking spot with that illuminated headband on your window and Jenny Sorensen's hat and then also the hat that was attached to her jacket. So, I mean, it is possible that the hat could have came from one of them, like it was attached to either under your vehicle or, or you know, not. I mean, you just... You really didn't put on any kind of defense, but that's because you didn't fucking have one, dude. What you did is evil. What you did cannot be forgiven. <coughs> Do you recall how long you, uh, your complete investigation took? Mine along with my colleagues? Yours. Mine. The examination itself of just me examining the vehicle? Just you. Probably over 40 hours. And that does not include the report that I'm writing. It doesn't include the process of going through the report, everything. But my examination, at least 40. And so I'm assuming you did the report after you completed the initial investigation? Part yes, the report's a summary of my processing. And define summary. What do you mean by summary? It pulls everything together. It details my examinations and any findings I have from those examinations. I always view summary as not every detail, but pretty much like... Uh, it's, it's, it's much as would be relevant, but not every single detail. Would that be fair to say? This report is comprehensive in the terms of it lists every single item that was collected. So why would you refer to it as a summary? It's a summary of the examination and processing. That's the best way to describe it. It's not a dictation, in other words. What do you mean by there, dictation? There are other reports that other agencies may do that are dictated. Right? They're this, I did this, then I did this, then I did this. This is a summary. This isn't a dictated report. So what exactly did you summarize in your report? My examination and processing strategies that I used and the items of evidence collected and any relevant findings associated with those <laughs> examinations. Did you do any examination of the cell phones? No, I collected those and transferred those to a detective with the Waukesha Police Department. Do you recall who that detective was? David, his last name is spelt, I believe, F-O-Y-E-N, Foyen. So at the time that you turned the phone phones over, did you do any do any more work in regards to the phones? No. <clears throat> Do you recall doing any, uh, investigation on the airbag control module? I didn't, no, I don't do that. If 
BBB, you just show more and more and more how much of a fucking idiot you are. This man is... I, I feel, okay, this is my opinion, that this man is over the top frustrated with how idiotic you are, the dumbass questions. I mean, not all of them are dumb. I'm not going to say that. But for the reason you're asking them, that's, I'm sure that's pretty dumb because you know what the fuck you did. None, nobody on that stand can tell you why you did it like a hundred percent they can say what they believe and and I'm pretty sure they'd be right on the money with that it's because your stupid bitch ass wasn't locked up that's why you did it you had the opportunity you took that opportunity with the shit that I've seen on your social media and I've mentioned it before in many videos you wanted to hurt as many as you could. I just... <laughs> you disgust me. And hey, who knows, maybe I'd disgust you. But guess what? I don't give a fuck. You worthless piece of fucking shit. I feel really bad for your children. Your son, I think he's, what, like 20 or 21 now? Then your daughter, who is a mother at such a young age. That's really sad. And then your youngest daughter. Yes, those are your kids. But you never took care of them. You, you're a sperm donor. That's all there is to it. And there's probably more kids out there that are yours. But you don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck about how you're not going to be there to raise them because you weren't helping raise them in the first damn place. And you can't control their mothers anymore either. I still can't believe that what I read about... One of your baby's moms that said she is embarrassed to say that you fathered her child. I'd feel the same damn way. I just can't stand you. And I know I repeat that a lot, you guys, and I apologize, but he disgusts me. Do you recall obtaining a search warrant to conduct an inspection on the uh, ACM? I'm sorry, no. I didn't understand you. An inspection of what? Uh, the, the ACM, I guess that would be the yeah. air control module, I'm guessing that's what that's Thank you. Re referencing. No, since I don't do that type of analysis or examination, I didn't obtain any search warrant with that. Any reason why I would say that in the paperwork? Objection vague. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. <clears throat> as to what paper your paperwork you're referring to. Uh I'm guessing I don't know what the what it would be called, but it says conclusion inspection summary. <laughs> and, and the conclusion inspection, inspection or conclusion slash inspection summary do you recall is it from this witness huh is it from this witness yeah okay go ahead go ahead i don't think that is from this witness john i don't see anything like that in this exhibit 90. are you Perhaps still looking at Inspector Schultz's report from the State Patrol, the last witness. Uh, what page number do you have? And I'll take a look at it and I'll compare. This says uh, page five. 
Yeah, he's looking at uh, the last exhibit from Inspector Schultz, 83. Well, it says Chief Christopher Johnson. Oh, it does say that in 83. Yeah, it says, if I can read for completeness, or you can, it says, upon arrival, I met with crime scene chief Christopher Johnson from the Wisconsin State Crime No, Lab. no, no, no. That's not what I'm reading from. Okay. Chief Johnson had obtained a search warrant to conduct the mechanical inspection and to image the data retained within the escape's airbag control module ACM. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. So that was written by Inspector Schultz, who just testified, not this witness. To clarify the record here. Thank you. I apologize for that. It's all in the same paperwork with uh, Chief Johnson, so I, maybe that's where the confusion comes in. The record would reflect this witness. His last name is Johnson, so I think that's understandable. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I was just reading what I have here. Fair enough. Keep going. Well, Daryl, that's why, you know, you should have had an attorney because you don't, first of all, you didn't prepare one second of your defense. It was stuff that was done by your defense attorneys that, your attorneys that represented you, that you fired so you could be your own lawyer, and you didn't prepare. You just thought, well, when I go in there, I'm going to read this report and ask questions. I'll make up the questions as I go. Like, you know, at least the prosecution was able to get down to it and figure out what was up. Because your ass, it just shows how dumb your ass is. Recall at any time obtaining any type of search warrants pertaining to the vehicle in this incident? Yes, I have obtained a copy of the search warrant. And do you remember what that uh, search warrant was was for? What, what was the intended search? Uh, to search the vehicle and process it for any biological fluids, hairs, fibers, any electronic equipment, any personally identifying information. And uh, the, the, the ACM would, would fall under the lines of uh, the mechanical side of? Yes. Okay. At any time during your inspection, did you observe anyone try to start the the vehicle when i was with investigator schultz when he came to my laboratory he attempted to start it After uh, you, you already st stated that your initial part of your investigation before before the report uh, totaled 40 hours. And at that time, after you had completed your report, did you do any more investigating in regards to the vehicle? After my report was complete? Yeah, after, after you had done uh, the 40 hours uh, that you stated with and then the actual report. No, once my report's done, I didn't do any further examination of the vehicle. And after that was completed, had you uh, received any follow-up from law enforcement at, after you had completed everything? No. Had you yourself uh, followed up with law enforcement ab about the investigation after you completed your initial part? No.
yourself didn't file any claims in this matter, did you? No. Do you know of anyone who filed any claims in this matter? I don't. And do you recall who you were subpoenaed by to testify? I was subpoenaed by District Attorney Sue Opper. Do you recall when that was? I believe it was sometime. I don't exactly recall when. And did you did you follow up on that subpoena? No. After you had received it. No. Have you at any time seen or read any complaints in, in regards to this incident? No. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this matter? The state of Wisconsin. Would you label that as a person, an actual human? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. Not real. Here you are, starting your freaking bullshit about uh, the state of Wisconsin. Is it a human being? Is it a, is it a person? You know this is going nowhere, this uh, argument of yours. It has never went anywhere it will never go anywhere so why wait well shit i just answered my own question i was gonna say why waste the court's time but that's all you ever did do that's the only thing you've accomplished is wasting their fucking time you loser you ever actually seen the plaintiff in this matter Objection. grounds Sustained. <clears throat> if you saw the plaintiff, would you be able to identify the plaintiff? Objection Grounds. irrelevant. Sustained. Pursuant to <coughs> 9611, sir, please move on to a different line of questioning. I'm just trying to establish who the plaintiff is, Your Honor. Do you see the plaintiff present in court today? Objection, irrelevant. Sustained. Would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? No. No further questions. Thank you. Any reader? Uh, just very briefly, uh, Mr. Johnson, you said when you arrived on Maple Street, there were police officers present? That's correct. And you said the vehicle was secure at that point? Correct. Objection. What do you mean? Leading. Um, the answer may stand. Next question. Overruled. What do you mean by that, sir? The perimeter was secured with crime scene tape, and there were officers that were standing at the location where the vehicle was. Was it, would it have been possible for a member of the public or any curious person to just walk up and touch the vehicle or do anything to the vehicle? Objection. Speculative. Uh, based on his training and experience, he may answer. Overall. <coughs> they would have been stopped by law enforcement. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. <coughs> And then uh, the exhibits that Mr. Johnson has, Your Honor, what would you like done with those? Uh, I'll take them. All right. Uh, I have 90 and 87. Yes.
was 87? 87 is a hat. I'm not sure yeah. if I did move that, but I would move that into evidence. So we will need that item for the next witness. Okay. okay, I'll put that back. Thank you. If you got no time, work smarter than ever Don't ever let them tell you that you can't never say never And turn your mind into the truest to go get us Never stop, I'll get it if I want it I gotta make to myself a promise I won't quit, keep going till I got it I won't give up till I'm on top, yeah You know 